hello. Nice to see you. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for return. Right. Was oh, it's all waffle, waffle. I can't bear it. Do you know that that first sentence is the hardest thing to say? I find it the hardest thing. I wonder if other people do. Anyway, my name's Penny. Welcome to Penelope's Chinwag. And I live here in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens. They're melting at the moment, but we've got a lot of um, hollyhocks and other tall plants there. And they just are in amongst that. And I think they're quite cool. We've got water stations all over the place for them. So they're still laying. So I think they're fine. So what's in store this week? Well, as you can see, I have uh, another one of Louise Crowther's uh, animals knitted and I'll show you her. I've got, oh, I did some baking because I've got some friends arriving and, oh, I did a little chat with mum about the 1930s. We went from 1930 to 1935 and Pete's mum got married in 1931 and his brother was born in 1932. So I've got some nice pictures of Grace uh, at about that time. Uh, Mum was, I think, ranging before, between four and nine. You know, we do the first five years of the 30s. And a little film of the sea. I thought you'd all like to go down to the seaside on this lovely warm day. So, shall we get stuck in? Let me tell you about Miss Piggy first of all. Her name in the book is Maisie. And uh, when I, I put a photo up here of when she wasn't stuffed, when I made her, and uh, she looked like she was going to be the, um, not headmistress, you know, the, the, one, the woman who runs the women's prison. <laughs> yeah, you're no messing with me. But once she got her stuffing in, and she got her dress on. She's changed character completely, so I'm really pleased. I'll get her. Well, this is her debut. She's rather gorgeous, isn't she? Little pinky ears. She's got a, a blue dress, which is such a pretty pattern. She's got her French knickers on which allows her little tail her little curly tail to come through can you see yeah it's a bit it's the light it, it's how we are isn't it she's got Tilly's bag on um, because it, it went with her outfit and it suited her and Tilly saw a bag because I did buy yeah, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Tilly saw another bag, so Tilly's got a different bag. And so Maisie has got Tilly's bag. Now, I wanted to make her, this is what I've learnt uh, from making these toys. I've made garments for, you know, donkeys, donkeys years. And I've got enough, really, but I'll probably make another one. But... Um, but what, Maisie? You're putting me off. But I thought when I made the toys, you wouldn't have to concentrate too much on your... What do they call it? You know, when you knit a square tension. I thought you won't need to concentrate. Just do it. But of course, the tension needs to be right, just as it needs to be right for if I knit something for me or Pete or anybody. It needs to be right because it's got to fit Maisie or Holly or, or Tilly. And I had some different cotton. I used the sheepies wool and you cuss can't be, oh, it's gorgeous. I mean, she is in the most gorgeous color. It's like a pale peach, but when you look at it, it's got this pink to it. It's, the colors are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and I had some different cotton, four ply cotton and last night I thought oh I'm going to knit her a little tea bar shoe it's very cute 
the little strap goes through the T-bar. But of course it's absolutely miles too big. It's miles too big. You can see the tension's just not right. So I've sent, yes, it's just not right. We tried it on, it looked rather cumbersome. So I've sent off for some, the rabbit hole I've gone down, is to send off for some uh, blue. Actually, I sent off for blue and pink because I didn't know if she'd want a pink tea bar with a dark sole or a blue tea bar. So I've sent off for both. I mean, they're so reasonable. I think they're 70 pence for, you know, or something, 170 for a 20 gram ball. But so reasonable. Anyway, so she's going to have tea bar shoes when it arrives. And then, of course, I thought while I'm sending off for it, I might as well send off for the sheepish wool because the next little animal I've seen is uh, a sloth. Is it sloth or sloth? Well, however you say it, this sloth has got pyjamas on, a dressing gown, beautiful soft dressing gown, and uh, slippers. So I thought he'd make a nicer addition to the group. So that's the piggy, and I can certainly say she came together well. Anything difficult about you? No, nothing difficult. I find the shoes the hardest because you knit them flat and then you go back and pick up four rows down the stitch to make that little edge. And what I've, I've found I do is to use a fine uh, dou double pointed needle, double end, you know. I pick the stitches up first and then I do my pearl row of knitting the two stitches together. For me, that's the fiddliest thing that there is. So we'll say goodbye to her. Tilly's got a new bag. She saw it and uh, she wanted it. And it's, it's lovely. You cast on something like 54 stitches and then decrease evenly knit two of those, sew them together. It has got a little pull with a button if you want, but she's gonna put her carrots in there. I'm gonna ask my friend Heather, Heather to make me some carrots to put in there. So Heather, if you're watching, which I know you are, we could do with a few teeny carrots just to stick out. And uh, I think that suited the allotment much better. Yes, you, you can see the difference in the size of the shoe. It just came up much too big, but I do like the T-bar. Holly's had some adjustments because, you see, what I, what I did wrong before, which is why I didn't like it, I knew there was something wrong, didn't I? Oh, I was saying she needs to be au naturel in her prickles. But, you see, this dress really allows the prickles you know, lots of room and it, yeah, it's fine. It's lovely. But what I did wrong was I knitted it. The tension was wrong and and so it was too big. In fact, I ran out of cotton. It, it takes the ball, 50 gram ball, but I ran out, which meant she had to have a different color strap. So I undid it down to middle of the waist here or middle of the dress. And I re-knitted it. It says knit it on a three millimeter needle, but I knitted it on a two seven five, and it's come up super. I love it now. She loves it too because it fits her. It fits around the waist. It looks right. So just getting that tension wrong threw the whole thing out, but uh, I'm pleased with her now. Yeah, and I rearranged the stuffing in her head. I think. Looking at other people's hedgehogs, they all have a sort of melancholy look. In fact, when Pete was out sitting on the patio um, the other night, because it's been so lovely and warm in the UK, and sitting out on the patio, and who should come scrubbling along but Mrs Tiggywinkle. So he put some uh, food down for her. He looked up what they like, and he's put some water down for her. So we were quite pleased to get our own hedgehog. But um, I think 
I changed the buttons. I'd used flat buttons, which my granddaughter-in-law pointed out, and I hadn't realised that they were flat, but they need just to have a little rim round them and to go in. So she's had a change of eyes, she's had her stuffing rearranged, and she's had her dress properly done. And I'm happy with her now. She's happy. Happy as Larry. So, uh, yeah. So it's the sloth next, but I'm going to give myself a little break because, yeah, it's quite a lot of knitting. You wouldn't realise how much knitting. In fact, it takes me over a day to put them all together, you know, to do the ears, to stuff them, the legs, the arms, the little tails. It's not a quick job, but it's a very relaxing job and rewarding. So uh, I'll put you back. And of course they are a talking point. <laughs> yeah. So I read something is you know, something or nothing, but I read that every finger is different, a different length. And we don't compare that finger to that finger and that finger to that finger because we need them all. We need them all different lengths. And that's how it is with us. We're all different, we're all different lengths, but we're all so needed. I just thought it was so nice to compare it to our fingers. We've all, you know, it's lovely. I don't know where that came from, my brain. I haven't got washing machine head, which is really nice. I've got friends coming to stay uh, down from London and yeah we do a test they do a test and they're coming to stay and the weather looks glorious so we're hoping for a lovely relaxing time so i think that's it for the chat this week oh i'm going to do a fascinating fact shall i do it now it's about the seagull's legs often i can remember them but i've had to write this one down because you think about it you see those seagulls or I know it, it happens with other animals too. Um, but when it's standing on the ice with its bare feet, or I was down by the sea, you know, and it was beautiful. There they are padding about and you think, oh, do your feet get cold? Because our feet get cold, don't they? However hot we might be, we can get cold feet. How does it conserve its body heat? And part of the secret, is what are called countercurrent heat exchangers. So, a countercurrent heat exchanger consists of a tube carrying a warm fluid that runs in close proximity to a tube carrying a cool fluid. If the fluids run in the same direction, only half of the heat is transmitted at best. But if the fluids run in opposite directions nearly 100% of the heat is transmitted. So the heat exchangers in a seagull's legs cool the blood on its way to the feet to near freezing and then rewarm the blood as it returns. But it doesn't have to go all the way down there, get freezing and then come up. What happens is because it's in close proximity it's a heat exchanger. So concerning birds in cold environments, ornithologist Gary Richardson writes, the principle of countercurrent heat exchange is so effective and ingenious that it's also been adapted in human engineering projects to avoid energy waste. I thought that was interesting. We're copying those seagulls' legs. Hasn't got a clue we're doing it. But it's, it's to our advantage. I made a lemon drizzle loaf, which is um, a John Waits recipe. And I haven't made one quite the same. So I'm going to put that up now. After that, it's going to be mum. And we do the 1930s. And then I'll come on and say cheerio. Well, I've got a friend coming to stay next I'm getting a couple of days, day after tomorrow. And I thought I'd make, well, I've made one of my chocolate 
salted caramel cakes, that's in the freezer, cut up, and I've made, oh, coconut and raspberry. And with the coconut and raspberry, I, when, I, when I filmed it, I balanced it all on each other, and I don't do that anymore. I make it as a tray bake, and also this time I've made it in a, in a tin, uh, you know, a loaf tin. So I've made it in a loaf tin, but I've also made it in a tray bake, and it works really, really well. But this morning I'm going to make a lemon drizzle, and I'm going to make a lemon drizzle loaf. And it's a little bit different to what I usually make. So um, what you do, first of all, is you whisk together, I've written it down, hang on. You whisk together 125 grams of butter and 125 grams of caster sugar. Mix it together well. So I'm going to do that and then I'll pop back That's in. lovely and creamed. And now I'm going to add two eggs. And I'm going to just lightly beat those in. Oh no, I'm going to add more than that. I'm going to add two eggs. Let me, let me do it here. I'm going to add two eggs, right, that's my two eggs, I'm going to add two ah uh, yes, two zest of two lemons, so that's in there, righty ho, so simple isn't it, two large eggs, zest of two lemons, and then I made some lemon curd earlier, which as you know I absolutely love, and it's two tablespoons of lemon curd. So I'm going to whisk that together now. I'll show you the lemon curd. I've done it in a previous uh, episode. I'll put it up here what episode it was. But that is the easiest thing to make, but the most delicious thing to eat. Oh, it's in the, it's in the other room, excuse me. <laughs> so there we are, two large eggs, zest of two lemons and two tablespoons I used homemade lemon curd, but of course you can use it out of a jar. Now I'm going to add the flour, 150 grams of self-raising flour. So I'm just going to stir that in and I'll come back. And there we are, all mixed in. So I'm going to put that in a loaf tin. I've just put a piece of grease proof in there so I can easily take it out. And it says cook for 35 minutes. So I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like then. So here it is, cooked. I think it took about 30 minutes. And now I'm going to, with a skewer, make holes all in the top. Well, make holes in the cake all the way over. Because what I've done with the juice of the two lemons, because I've used the zest in here, I mix the juice of the two lemons with two tablespoons of caster sugar. And what John Waite says, because it's his recipe, is bring it to the boil and then take it off the heat. So that's what I did. I haven't ever done that before. I've always just um, poured it straight over. But I think it's going to make a difference. So I've brought it to the boil. That's that. And I'm going to now pour it over. Of course, what that does is it melts the sugar. And so that's, that looks much nicer than when I usually pour it all over. Oh, that was a struggle getting up. <laughs> I don't know. Is it a struggle for you too? <laughs> it must be the heat. So I'm going to pour that on now. It's going to be fantastically moist. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to make a couple more holes so that it can seep in. Yeah, so there's my cake. I'll wait for it to get cold and then I'll, I'll show you. The little blackbird is, 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 is coming right on the windowsill and saying, please will you give me another cake of, um, you know, bird food. Pete's just putting it in. 
So the cake's out. I just lifted it out with the two pieces of paper. Otherwise it's impossible, whoops. Otherwise it's impossible to get it out of um, the tin, even though it's non-stick. I'm gonna make, cut a slice off the peat and he can say it needed this or it needed that as he usually does. Now I'll give him the end bit, he always likes the end bit. Let's see. What? When you've washed your hands, I want you to taste test this cake. Oh, it's yeah. not really quite cold yet, but that'll be all. I think that will make a difference, melting. You know, bringing that to the boil, not boiling it, but bringing it, bringing the lemon to the boil with sugar. Because it hasn't gone all grainy now. There's a, a little bit. Ooh. Nice and lemony. It's not really taste testing. I wanted you to say what you thought into the camera. You said what I thought. It's very nice. It's very lemony. Very nice, very lemony. Now we are. the best you'll get out of it. What more do I want? A detailed statement. Hello. Yes. Mum, you were just chatting to me while we had our coffee. You were telling me about a guy uh, who lived down below you. Yes. When you were married, you yes. had two rooms up the top of a we house. Had two rooms. Then we had, there was a little three-room flat in the middle and a three-room flat on the ground floor. And the man that lived on the ground floor was a road sweeper. And it when we were talking about this time that we were going to talk about, it just reminded me how hard he worked and how particular he was. The roads that he cleaned, which were all local, how particular he was that they were done properly. And when the more you think of it then, in that time, that there were very few cars in the local road, mostly local, were horses and cars. Yeah. So he had lots of horse dung yeah. to sweep up, especially the big shire horses that pulled the coal carts full of the coal that was delivered all the time. Yeah. Then. It's a big old job for him, oh, Mum, but you, yes. you said you remember him as being very... He was very strict about his... his his hall and everything being clean because I used to put the pram down there although the pram folded up I put the used to put the pram down there for a while until dad could come in and fold it up and bring it upstairs oh, and you remember how pernickety it was but oh, I'm yes. thinking now what a good thing yes. that was that was a perfect job yes, for him absolutely so yes. yeah so the reason that jogged your memory well we're going to look back and see the time 1930 1930 we're going to see how far we get um and there was a few bits that i i wanted to pick out one of them here it says the cotton industry bosses today lamented the almost total eclipse of the petticoat and the rise of the short skirt. They claim these trends have led to a drop in sales of more than 200 million yards a year. They said, where our daughters wear three or four yards of cotton cloth, our mothers used to wear 10. And so mm. they had a cotton week because they yes. were trying to promote yes. cotton. Yeah, mm. so you... You know, when you were 1930, how old were you in 1930, Mum? I was only four, but of course four. my mother, my mother wore all long clothes. Did she? Oh, yes. Right. E even, not right down to her ankles. Yeah. But midi. Midi, we, yeah. yes. We call them midi. Yes, yeah. and they were heavy, you know, yeah. that, that the cloth that... Yeah, she so wore a cotton petticoat yes. underneath. Yeah. But then, of course, the younger people were wanting oh, short, wanted short, yes, yes. Yes, shorter skirts. Yes. Um, the Church of England today gave a cautious go-ahead for the use of birth control. Well, 1930, it says um, you can only use birth control if there's a good moral reason um, to do that. It shouldn't be used for selfishness 
luxury or mere convenience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let the women be selfish yeah. and, and decide when they want their children. Yeah. Absolutely, it's amazing. Yeah. New fibre yeah. nylon is stronger than silk, Mum. And so, nylon. Yeah. Oh. What's your memories of well, nylon? My memories of nylon was when the, the, we used to dance. Go to dances in the war, and oh. the American GIs used oh. to come and chat the girls up. And what did they have in their pockets? Yeah, a pair of nylons to tempt oh. them to go out with them. All righty ho! Oh yeah! Oh, poor children to be spared the whip. Yes, because often they use the whip in schools, but yeah. especially I believe in public schools. Yes, the whip was. Used. Yeah, because one member put it, why abolish for the children of the poor? What was good for the children of the rich yes. in public schools? So 1932, they're still whipping children. Doesn't bear thinking no. about, does it? No. Really doesn't bear thinking about. Joblessness is blamed for the rise in crime. Well, wow. to be without a job then was really... Yeah, you didn't get the help no, like you did now. No, Absolutely. No. BBC opens its new headquarters, Mum. It's a beautiful 19 oh, sort of 20s yeah. Art Deco building. And that's in yes. the end of Regent Street there. Because the radio was a big, 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 marvellous thing. Yeah, then. absolutely. Oh. Henry Hall and the BBC Dance oh, Orchestra. So it was officially open today, although the first programme was broadcast from the building two months ago. That's oh, rather good. You yes, remember that, don't yes. you, even though you were little? Yes. Four-year-old Shirley Temple is on her well, <laughs> well on her way to screen fame. More coals on her head then. <laughs> yeah. P pitch street battles broke out in London because uh, there was hunger marches, Mum. Oh, yes. And um, um, because the people were... Yes, people were... Hungry because they, because they were jobless. In a way, you yes, know. absolutely. So not only have we got all that going on in Germany and you know oh, over yes. there, we've got it. You know, Hitler wielding his power yeah, all the time. He was, wasn't yes, he? Yes, in the lead yes. up to war. Tess here, nineteen thirty-three. Hitler takes over as Chancellor of German oh, rights. Yes. And and you said, although you were young, nineteen thirty-three. You could you picked it up from your parents yes. listening to the radio. Yeah, I was seven then, and then yeah. as as the years went on up to the war, I could listen to the radio. Yes, because you could sit and, and yes. if Dad was sitting listening, yes. he loved the news, and yeah. then we'd sit there sometimes, or I'd be doing something else, but be yeah. listening as well. Yeah, so 1933, it says, Hitler's terror takes hold. Yes. So, yeah. It that was, was the beginning of him. Yes. Hitler bans all opposition parties. So, so uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we've got um, rather a lot going on there. Oh. Concentration camps, 1933. Yes. So we think of the war as 39, but oh, absolutely. That went on for years before yes, be the war years began. Before. Yes. Oh, Fred Perry wins US Open oh. title, tennis title. We just have Wimbledon yes. there, haven't we? And, um, yes, they still talk about him. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. And more fires raged across England and Wales. Uh, New Forest, uh, because... Uh, was just a heat wave and this was in September it said it was the hottest month, month. on record now that was well, amazing yes. yes bear brand luxury stockings mum bear brand bear brand yes yeah. yes and we've got a new London corner house opening oh. you loved the corner <gasps> houses didn't yes. you yes yes and the, the waitresses were called nippers. Nippers. Because they used to nip in and out the tables oh. and they had lovely white frilly, yeah. not hats, but just little things that would go over the front of their... Yeah. And, and their their dress was navy blue and white. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. navy blue with a white collar. And, yeah. and, and that 
went all over the world for photos of them. Yeah. Them. Ah, right. Famous. Yes, because it was so famous. Famous. Dancer Fred Astaire is oh. a bright new cinema star, Mum. Yes. Wow. And Just there's new words for 1933. From Australia comes the phrase, no flies on, on me. me. <laughs> oh, and also, slimming. That was a new yeah. word. Do you think of that? Yes. Everybody uses yeah. slimming now. No. Yes. It was a new well, word. clothes were changing, then beginning to change. Oh, right. And it says here, slimming blame for potato sales slump. The slimming craze among women has led to a dramatic slump in the potato mm -hmm. market. It says the slender figure has been all the rage since designers launched short skirts, bobbed hair and a generally yes. boyish look. Mm -hmm. The style, however, has been widely criticised notably by men who like their women more curvaceous and by doctors who fear women may be endangering their health. Yes. I oh. just remember my sister having her hair shortened. Oh, the bob. And bob. Yes. And, and Dad couldn't, he couldn't get over it, how much it changed her. Yeah. He didn't like it. Either. Gracie Fields land re oh. has record film contract, Mum. She comes from Rochdale, yes. our Gracie, yeah. Lancashire's yes. lass. Yes, she appeared on, you could hear her sing on loads of, loads of things on the BBC. Our Gracie, as she's known in Lancashire, said, I don't really like it. There's too much responsibility. Give me a cottage and ten shillings. <laughs> she made her name singing Sally yes. in review as the Great War ended. And the biggest Aspidistra right, in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. Because oh. that was a that was a famous plant then. Yeah. Every well I say everybody. Yeah, but we people all had, had an Aspidistra in the oh, front room. Right, yes, yeah, everyone a really had it. Yeah. Huge yeah. Green plant. And I know she had she yes. got that little cottage, I know, because when we were in Capri, you know, off in yes. the island off Italy, that we you took a boat ride yes. and you saw Grace's Fields yes. cottage. She 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 lived there. Because what that a lovely was one place. of her songs, Isle of Capri. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, well, there we go. We've got celebrations for the King's Silver Jubilee, Mum. Yeah, King George and Queen Mary. Yes. Twenty five years yes. since he became king. The RAF will be trebled in two years, so it doesn't lag behind the world. Mm. Keep fit fad finds favour in Britain, Mum. Oh. The slogan, use your vigour to keep your figure, <laughs> is drawing thousands of women into keep fit classes. <laughs> Can you remember keep no. fit classes? No, I remember them at school. We had, we did have, not keep fit, but they were very up on keeping mobile and yes. doing exercises. So this is 1935, yes. Mum. How yes. old were you then? I was nine. Nine, yes. yes. So here we've got Keep yes. Fit for Women. Mm -hmm. And Gatwick is soon to be the site of a new airport. Oh, yeah, 1935. Well. It will have its own station on the main London to Brighton line. Yes. It will be <gasps> capable of handling six aircraft at a time. Oh. Six, Six aircraft. aircraft at a time. <laughs> well, I never. How times have changed. Uh, yes. They were moaning today about the noise from Heathrow, the oh, planes, well keeping they? people awake at night and things. Right well, so we'll say cheerio. Yeah. Nice to see bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't need to say goodbye because I'm coming back on again, Mum. I always do this, yes, don't I? because you're... Yeah, so you're going to say goodbye. Yes. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time. So I hope you enjoyed all of that. And um, what's coming up now is a little film. Oh, yes. The Fox. Well, I mean, I was sitting in there last night in the call and the Fox walked right through the conservatory into the lounge and... You know, I had to say, excuse me, <laughs> off you go. I mean, foxes have fleas. I don't want them jumping out. So we got the message. But um, 
we were sitting there the other day on the patio and the, the plants were moving and they're all pot plants there. The plants were moving. I said, what's, what's that? Oh yes, he's up here with us laying in, in amongst the plants. So that made us jump. And then we went for a walk uh, down the 39 steps down to see the sea at high tide uh, because it was lovely and cool and there was a little bird just at the bottom of the steps on our way home and it was it was on the um you know handrail i wanted to rescue it uh, but pete said it'll find its way out of course it will and it's it's open at the top I was saying leave the gate open for it, honestly, things you think. So that's the little film for this week. And I'll see you, I'll see you soon. Bye. Take care and enjoy yourselves. He can. You don't have to leave the gate open for him. Oh. 